Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pediatric Audiology, also known as AUD 511. Uh, today's class is going to be a little bit different. So by the time you all view this introdu introductory recording, I will be in a training um, focused on hearing conservation. So my training starts at seven and it runs until 11 and then I have an exam from 11 to 12. So I won't be able to be with you all live for our first class, but I will surely see you live for our class next week. So as you already know, uh, this class is in person, but we have extended um, virtual classes until February 14th. So um, we will have online classes until that time. And when we resume in person classes, then we will uh, be meeting uh, Thursdays 9 to 11.45 in real time in person. So until that time, we will be meeting in a virtual space. Um, just a couple of things I wanna discuss with you all about this semester. So I'm gonna walk through the syllabus. Some of these things have not changed because they're the same as last semester, right? Like for example, my office location has not changed, but there are some things that are a little bit different. For example, the course learning outcomes will be different because you're in a different course. The activities and assignments are gonna be a little bit different. So I, I wanna take this opportunity to walk you all through the course syllabus in this introductory um, recording. Um, and there will be a follow-up recording to this that will just get everyone oriented to some things before we take off into our uh, pediatric audiology content for the semester. Uh, also, another thing I want, I'm going to do, uh, we're gonna have another follow-up video after this to review the, um, one of the labs from last semester because it is very relevant to what we're going to be doing this semester. So I decided to, um, table reviewing lab six with you all until now because I didn't want to review it with you and then you forget and then you have to review it again. So I figured, you know, let's just let everybody enjoy their break. Let's not stress people out with, you know, reviewing labs, uh, especially when uh, we can make reviewing the lab more relevant uh, to you all this semester. So. Uh, that is what we'll also do today. So kind of a light day. We're going to just go over the syllabus. I'm going to go over some content, orient you all to some information that you'll need to know in order to be able to build on your, your skill set as it relates and pertains to pediatric audiology. Uh, so you're going to get about two, vid two videos from me today. I'll try not to make them very long. So uh, here we go. So I am your instructor for pediatric audiology. Um, my office is in Macquarie Hall, 510A. I do have an office phone now, so I can be reached at this number here. I have communicated with the second year cohort and they have opted to um, not contact me on my personal phone. Uh, so in, the spirit of being fair uh, and consistent, I'm going to ask that you all do the same. So at this time, I would like to request that we discontinue the communication via text, um, only because I wanna be consistent across courses. I have no issue with receiving text messages from you all. I think that you are all very respectful and very responsible when it comes to communicating with me via text. Uh, but again, to be consistent across courses, I, I am going to um, uh, communicate with all of you uh, via email, um, uh, Zoom, and also my office phone number. So uh, my office hours are a little bit different this semester. So office hours are Wednesdays from 10 to 12, 
uh, in my virtual meeting room on Zoom. So uh, logging in to or scheduling meetings with me will be very much the same as last semester. You should all have uh, received a link that um, alerted you that I was sharing my calendar with you. And you should have also received the instructions for how to schedule an office visit with me. If you still have difficulty with any of that or you have not received those notifications, let me know and I will make sure to help clarify things for you. Also, uh, Priya is really good at this. You're all really good at this. So if someone's having difficulty with scheduling office hours with me, I encourage you to check in with each other because you've all been very successful with this. Um, and if you're not able to resolve the issue uh, among each other, then of course, let me know what it is that I can do to, to help. Um, as mentioned, class is going to be Thursdays from 9 to 11.45, whether or not we're meeting in a virtual space or in person. Our classroom setting will be a little bit different this semester, so we will be in Dwight Bensel Hall in room 202. Uh, no need to know where that is just yet, uh, because we're going to be online until the 14th. But as we get closer to our in-person uh, meeting, I will provide everybody with directions for how to get to uh, Dwight Bensel Hall. Or if you've got some spare time somehow, some way, and you're walking around, or you already know where this hall is, then you don't need to go uh, looking for it. Okay, so course format. So we're gonna be in-person and online. Uh, format will include lectures, lab assignments, activities, and discussion focused on diagnosing hearing loss in infants and children. Uh, you all, as students, must have access to a computer, internet connectivity, uh, Microsoft Office to include Excel and PowerPoint, and a suitable browser for submitting assignments through Canvas. I've recently become a big fan of Chrome. Uh, they've got a lot of really nice features that Chrome. So uh, I've elected to use Chrome over Safari, but in Safari, uh, you know, that's the browser for mo most, the default browser for Apple products. And I'm uh, an avid Apple user. So all my passwords and such are linked across all of my devices in Safari. <laughs> so I've, I'm back and forth between Safari and, and Chrome. When I'm at work, though, I will say I, I do prefer Chrome because I like a lot of the features that it um, that it has. Okay, so uh, course materials, as always, will be available on Canvas. So what are we going to talk about to, in this semester? So we're going to discuss topics related to hearing loss in children, uh, including common etiologies and syndromes, newborn hearing screening procedures, and behavioral and electrophysiologic diagnostic, diagnostic tests. So we're gonna cover, all, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's quite a bit. It's gonna take us through all of, all of the semester and it's gonna be um, a really good time. I think you'll all enjoy it very much. Okay, so these are just some of the core, or these are the course learning outcomes for the semester. So these are the things that I would, ex I'm expecting you to learn and take away from the semester. So if you're ever curious about, you know, what, what might we need to study for an exam or for a quiz, I would advise you to come back and have a look at your course learning outcomes. Um, because the things that I will ask you and expect you to know and teach you will be ripped and related right to these course learning outcomes. So I, I would advise you all to have a, a look at these. So just to give you an idea about what's gonna happen this semester, right? We're gonna learn a lot, talk about a lot of stuff. So the textbook that we're going to use, uh, you should have access to it. It's a um, virtual textbook or online textbook or ebook, I suppose is, is another way to say it. Uh, Tharp and Seawald. The Comprehensive Handbook of Pediatric Audiology. Okay. Um, our library liaison for our college is Susie Bamanyar. I've talked to her a couple of times already. She's a really lovely person. Uh, 
Okay, so let's have a look at our determination of grades. So students will be evaluated based on the grade dissemination breakdown in this table here, table one. So some of these activities will look, or some of these tasks will look the same as what you've seen in prior classes with me. Some of them will look a little bit different. So we'll talk about them right now. So you're going to have one article review and presentation. So you're going to be assigned an article, which is uh, we'll, we'll get to further down in the syllabus. You're going to review with the article and you're going to create a presentation for that article and you're going to share it with uh, the class. Okay, and that will be worth 100 points. There will also be a laboratory, uh, laboratory assignments and activities. There will be a total of six of those and those will be worth a total of 200 points. There will also be four quizzes that will be worth a total of 100 points. So uh, each quiz will be worth 25 points. Uh, you'll also, each of you will, will present on three diseases, illnesses, or syndromes or disorders related to childhood hearing loss. And I'll get to that further along in the table in the syllabus as well. But each of you will be presenting, will present three diseases, syndromes, illnesses, or what have you that are associated with childhood hearing loss. And each one of those presentations will be worth 100 points each for a total of 300 points. Okay. And our final exam will be cumulative and it will be worth 100 points. All right, so here, uh, I'm not going to read these to you, uh, but these are just descriptions of each of these tasks. So the journal article review uh, it is referring you to table two uh, for you to see which article you've been assigned to. Uh, the activities are described here. So uh, the activities will include worksheets and exercises related to anatomy and physiology of the speech and hearing mechanism. There will also be uh, activities and worksheets that are related to uh, counseling uh, uh, in terms of demonstrating how to share and explain newborn hearing test results um, and counseling on pediatric hearing loss. Uh, we'll also have an activity where each of you will, uh, will work in groups and you will work to um, uh, present to the rest of the class a, a fun way to explain to kids of varying ages the importance of protecting your hearing, okay? Um, and also we'll perform some activities to help us get some experience or, or some comfort when it comes to performing visual and conditioned play audiometry, all right? Uh, we'll also be participating in, um, you'll be completing quizzes. So there'll be four quizzes and each quiz will cover about three to four weeks of content. Um, there are four modules, which will be more clearly outlined when I get further into the syllabus, but there'll be four modules and there will be a quiz to go with each module. All right. Um, okay, so here's table two. As mentioned previously, table two is uh, the article review presentation by student. So uh, in this column, we've got the students. So there's six of you. So there's six rows. Uh, in this column, we've got the title of the article. And in this column, we've got the author and the year the article um, was published. So uh, Bavia, you'll present adherence to follow-up recommendations for babies at risk for pediatric hearing loss, all right? All of these articles are already available to you in Canvas, and they are listed by title, okay? It's important that you look in the course schedule to see 
when this reading is due. When the reading is due, the presentation is due. So let's have a look really quick. So Bavia, you're presenting McKierney et al. 2020. Bavia, you're going to present your presentation on February 10th. Okay. So um, what I will do is I will create a about a five minute video to give you all an idea about what I'm looking for in these article reviews and in the presentation. OK, so I'm going to model it for you, give you an example, and I'll have that ready for you all to view for by next class so that those of you have to who are are slated to present earlier on in the semester, we'll be able to read your articles and, 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 and complete your review and your presentation in a, um, uh, with enough time and you won't feel uh, rushed to, to, to complete the assignment. Um, and you'll also be able to produce good quality work, okay? So I will model that for you. The, how I want the presentations to go. Um, and then I will post a video for you about five minutes, nothing, nothing outrageous, right? I just wanna give you an idea about how to set this, set this up. Okay, so in addition <clears throat> to the article reviews, you're also going to have childhood hearing loss presentations, as I mentioned. So each of you are gonna have three childhood hearing loss presentations. So uh, the rubric for this is posted. Um, we will go over this uh, in person. Well, not in person, but in live uh, the next time that I see you. Because it's a lot and I don't want to overwhelm you uh, with, with a whole bunch of content. But with each presentation, you will prepare and upload a written document in APA format to Canvas for grading. And you'll also present your work in class um, in a format of your choice. So you can be traditional and create a PowerPoint presentation, or you can do something different. You can do um, a Prezi, which is kind of like a PowerPoint presentation or you can make a video, or if there's any other way that you feel like you can share this information, please feel free uh, to explore it. If you're unsure, you're welcome to check with me first um, and you know, to, to make sure that it's, it'll be okay and then uh, have at it. Um, let's see here. I will also share with you an example of what I want to, how I want the childhood uh, hearing loss presentations to, to look like. Okay. Um, in addition to the document uh, written in APA format, uh, you will also generate five questions from your presentation in any format. So I mean, it could be a fill, it could be a fill in the blank question. It can be multiple choice. Um, it can be um, any format of your choosing. Uh, I want you to generate these questions and submit them to me with your answers. Okay, all presentations must be complete by week seven. I want you to turn your presentations into me by week seven, but you don't have to turn in your written documents until the end of the semester. Okay. All right.
All right, so here's the table uh, as was previously mentioned. So again, <clears throat> syndromes and disorders associated with childhood hearing loss. You've got a two column, well, one, two, three, four columns here. Um, one column for the students, one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, I didn't miss anybody. And then we've got three columns of, um, syndromes okay it doesn't matter what order you present them it doesn't matter when you present them well it doesn't matter what date you present them however you will have a time window to present complete and present your uh, childhood hearing loss presentations but remember that the written documents are not due until the end of the semester Okay. Final exam will be cumulative. <clears throat> okay. Grading, nothing really crazy here. You all have seen this before. Total points possible, 800. Um, uh, you'll be graded based on the tasks outlined in table one. Uh, this is the table three shows the letter grade using the plus minus grading system. Um, let's see, you're all expected to arrive to class uh, virtually or in person on time. <clears throat> uh, makeup quizzes, exams, and assignments will not be permitted. Okay. We're going to use Lockdown Browser again this semester. I think you guys did a great job with that. I like Lockdown Browser. Um, so these are, these are the same instructions you've seen before regarding Lockdown Browser. Um, uh, but please have a, have a look through them. What else? Okay. Uh, the assigned grade for all unexcused absences and missed quizzes and assignments will be a grade of a zero. Okay, late work will not be accepted for any reason. There's no negotiating on that. Okay, I've changed my email policy a little bit. Um, so it's I've outlined that here. Uh, due to teaching meetings and research schedules, I'll respond to your emails within 72 hours after you sent it. Um, if you send me emails after five on any day, I likely won't respond. Uh, um, I don't check my emails after I go home. I usually go home around 4.30. Um, on Fridays, if you email me at four or after four, I probably won't check it until Monday. I mean, I think that's fair. All right, just some university policies. All right, um, this is really important to me. So uh, please have a look at some of the examples of academic dishonesty um, and just do whatever you can in your power to refrain from doing these. Please, let's all be honest. I um, value honesty and trust. And I am trusting you all to be honest and upfront with me um, until I have a reason not to, um, not to anymore, okay? So please don't cheat. Please don't present work that's not yours. Please don't try to deceive me. Uh, please don't try to make me believe something that is not true. Uh, please don't try to, try to pass off any work as your own. Uh, please don't try to sabotage anybody in the classroom uh, or in any classroom, uh, you know, in my classroom or in Dr. Stack's classroom or in Dr. Yellen Chetty's classroom. Please don't try to sabotage your clinical instructors, don't try to sabotage your classmates, anybody, you know, please try to refrain from that kind of behavior. All right. Uh, also, please refrain from unauthorized collaborations. Uh, I know that you might be compelled to
talk with other people who may have taken this class previously. Um, but please note that talking with them might not help very much because their iteration of the class might be a little bit different than yours. So uh, I would advise you to uh, refrain from um, collaborating too much with others outside of your own um, cohort. Um, please submit original work. Okay. All work submitted for this class is required to be original work developed for class assignments and should never be submitted for assignments made as part of a previous and or concurrent courses. To do so otherwise constitutes academic dishonesty and will be addressed as such in this course. Group work will not be accepted unless specified by the instructor. Okay. If there are any questions about that, please come. Come, let, come talk to me, let's talk about it. Um, same as last semester, we're still in this weird back and forth in-person, not in-person thing. <laughs> so it may be necessary to ingest, uh, adjust the content assignments and timeline, point system and what have you. Um, if this is necessary, the I have the right to change the syllabus. Uh, however, these changes will be announced in class and posted on Canvas. Students are responsible for any such announced changes and for checking Canvas. Uh, uh, there's also some information here about stress management. Uh, I've not been to the counseling center. I'm not sure where it's located, uh, but here is some information for those of you who are um, interested. I will say that. Um, it, based on conversations I've had uh, with multiple people, colleagues and students from different universities, it is much better to get ahead of stressful situations than it is to try to scramble to resolve them um, or alleviate stress when the situation becomes stressful. So if you know that you have difficulty sometimes managing multiple things at, at once. I would advise you to think um, at the at the outset about how you can about what strategies and tools you can implement to kind of alleviate some stress for yourself on the front end. What can you do to make it so that when it does get down to you know um, down to the wire and you're having to do a you know a lot of work um what can you do on the front end so that you're not so busy and overwhelmed on the back end okay so um if for some of you talking to your friends or a trusted counselor or or psychologist or or anybody if that is something that is helpful to you i would certainly recommend that you start doing that at now <laughs> at the outset on the, at the front end okay so that way when things do kick in the high gear and things get really going um you won't be <gasps> you know stressed out so uh try to figure out what works best for you and 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 and, and do it all right so here's the exciting part da, 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 da. we finally made it to the course schedule AUD 511 Pediatric Audiology, Spring 2022. All right, so you've got the week number, the date, the chapter, topics, readings, assignments, and deadlines, and we've also got a column for guest lecture. Now, I've just I've uh, been in communication with some audiologists at uh, the Lucille Packard Stanford Children's Hospital, and there are some audiologists. Uh, pediatric audiologists and uh, uh, otolaryngologists or ENTs, uh, some surgeons and some educational audiologists who have expressed an interest in providing, providing a guest lecture. Um, we're still working on these things, on scheduling the guest lecture. Um, so these, these names, these lectures and topics are somewhat tentative. Uh, because we're still waiting to hear back 
uh, in terms of confirmation from some folks. But I want you to know that the purpose of the guest lecture is to supplement what you're getting in um, regular lectures with, with me, okay? So even if for some reason the guest lecturer is unable to attend or schedule changes or they gotta go and uh, uh, insert some uh, pressure equalization tubes, then that's okay, not a problem you will have already been introduced to content that that uh is related to your 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 course learning outcomes so the guest lectures are meant to give you an intermediate to advanced uh, understanding of some of these concepts that we're talking about my lectures are meant to get you to that intermediate spot Okay, so the guest lectures are meant to give you some information that you might not need to know, but it's still really interesting and great for you to know. And it's also meant to reinforce some things that I've already taught to you. But my lecture will be the primary lecture. Okay, my goal for these lectures is to tee you up, to set you up, uh, to be able to understand. Uh, and ask questions about any of the more advanced topics that our guest lectures get into. Okay, I don't like for my students to have a guest lecture and not have any idea about what that person's talking about. So my, my goal is always to, I call it, tee you up. So like if you think about golfing, uh, you put the ball in a tee. So I'm going to tee you up. I want I want to get you ready for this guest lecture to come in and um, uh, just knock you off the tee. You know, send you sailing across the green. Okay, that's always my goal. I don't want a guest lecturer to come into the classroom and you're like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. I will not do that to you. So the guest lectures are meant to be a fun, um, fun part of the class. It's meant to give us some more knowledge, advance our knowledge beyond what we've already discussed. But um, it's not it's not something that's supposed to be instead of. It's supposed to be in addition to. All right. All, now, now that I said all that. <laughs> All right, so we might have we might have some guest lectures in the docket this semester. Okay, so like I mentioned before, we've got four modules this semester. Uh, the first module includes this course introduction, and I'm also going to ask you to complete a syllabus quiz, which will be worth. Ooh, how many points was a syllabus quiz? Yikes. Oh, syllabus quizzes were 25 points. <laughs> Please forgive me, guys. Okay, so after this, this uh, intro, you're going to complete a syllabus quiz. Um, and then I'm also going to uh, share that other video with you, like I promised. And then when we meet next week, we'll go over the video or over the um, Oh my gosh, my, my brain is just dead, dead, dead. Ah, yes. After, in addition to this introductory video, I'm also going to get you all the, the, the lab six exercise. So we're going to talk about, I'm going to make a video focused on that, and then we'll discuss the answers next class. All right. Um, next class, you're going to have quite a bit. Um, there's a couple of activities that will be due, uh, but it's okay. A lot of it's going to be review, so I, don't worry too much about it. You'll we'll all be okay. All right. Um, so module one will end uh, on uh, February 17th. Okay, and then you'll see module two will begin. 
And at the beginning of module two, there will be a quiz on module one, quiz one. And you'll see it, it's from weeks one through four, one, two, three, four. And that's gonna, that's essentially the breakdown of this course, all right? You're always gonna have module, content, 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 quiz to, to review the content that you learned from the, pre, from the previous module, all right? Um, also, this green play button in, signifies this is when we are going to start uh, the syndromes and disorders presentations, okay? And after I finish this going over the course syllab, uh, schedule, I'll show you um, how I want you all to sign up for that. You've already done it in the past, but I'm gonna just show you so I can say that I did, all right? Um, and then the syllabus will, the course schedule will continue uh, like that. So on the 17th, we're gonna start the, the hearing loss presentations. And on the 10th, week seven, all of the hearing loss presentations must be done. Why do you ask? Because you're going to have a quiz on all of those syndromes on the 24th of March. So I want you to have enough time after the presentations are due to be able to study for this quiz because there are a lot of syndromes. You're each presenting three and there are six of you. There will be 18 syndromes and you're each going to send me five questions that you generate from those, from those uh, presentations. Please make them good questions. If you do not send me good questions, I will make you questions. I will say that again. I want you to submit me five questions from each of your presentations. So you will each submit to me a total of 15 questions. Five questions for each of your childhood hearing loss presentations. If you do not make good questions, if you do not generate good questions, I will throw the question out and replace it with my own question. Please make good questions. I don't think you want my questions. I think you might prefer your own, all right? Make them good questions. If they're not good questions, I'll toss them and you'll get my question. All right, what else, what else, what else? Um, all right, so after that, we're gonna keep uh, trucking along and we're gonna go into electrophysiologic testing. Uh, and then we'll wrap up the semester with module four where, where we will talk about uh, behavioral audiometry to include condition play and visual reinforcement audiometry. We'll also talk about some considerations when we're talking about pediatric cochlear implantation and we'll also talk about uh balance function in children all right you're also going to have a quiz for uh a final exam review uh i'll also want you to complete oh i mean i need to change that that needs to be bolded in red um uh you're also going to complete your uh, or submit your hearing loss post test so you're going to, you're going to take a hearing loss pretest today. Where is that? Oh, whoops. To kind of give you an idea about what you know, where you are. I'm sorry. You're going to take that next week, not today. We know what I'll do. I'll make it available to you. So if you want to take it today, take it today. It's a completion grade. Okay, I, it's a pretest. You're not getting, you are getting graded for the attempt. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to make it available to you because I want to put it in Canvas. Um, I need to put it in Canvas. So um, it's not in Canvas right now, it's on paper. So chill out on that. <laughs> chill out on that. We'll, we'll save the pretest for next, next class. Anyhow. I got off on a tangent. So there will be a pretest you'll take next class, and then you'll also do a post test. And we can have that. That will also kind of serve as like your hearing. I'm sorry, your your final exam review. 
All right. And then you're going to have your final exam, which will be cumulative. And, oh, no, I don't have it listed on here. Okay. So uh, that's it for the, for the syllabus. So what I'm going to do really quickly, I'm going to, one, show you how I want you all to sign up for your hearing loss presentations. And then um, I also want you, I also want to show you when the final exam is. So let me stop sharing my screen. Stop share. Let me do this. Bear with me. It's logging in. All right, let me share my screen with you guys. All right, all right, let me move this high floating, there we go. All right, so how do I want you to sign up to present? So this is my, so when you all look at my calendar, I've shared my, the link with you, you should see something like this. Um, let's see here. We're gonna start this, okay. So childhood hearing loss presentations and activities. The childhood hearing loss presentations will start on February 17th, all right? So what you would do is similar to what some of you may have done last semester. You're going to click on, boop, right here. You're gonna uh, click on go to appointment page for this calendar. Ugh, you're gonna have to, scroll 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 until you find the date you're looking for you want to present on the 17th click it right there so this is broken down into 10 minute intervals so one two three four so uh, there will be enough time allotted for four students to present each not four students four presentations each week so at four presentations over the course of uh like two or three i think it's three weeks one two three four five over a period of five weeks we should be able to we, we will not should i calculated it we'll be able to cover all of the the presentations all right so that's how I want you to schedule. So you just click, uh, go to appointment, and then you find where you want to sign up, and then you select, boop, boop, and you're good, okay? Uh, and what I also wanted to show you the final exam, because I didn't put it in the syllabus, but I don't want to delay letting you know when it is. I just didn't put it in the syllabus. I forgot, but it's in my my calendar. All right. So your final exam is going to be obviously with me. Um, May 23rd at 7.15 in the a.m. Um, I am okay with making it online. You guys did really well with that last time and 7.15 is really early. So uh, you can plan for your final exam to be online and we'll do it using Respondus. Um, that should be okay. I'll confirm with uh, Dr. Bagat because I know our class is in person, so everything is supposed to be in person. Um, but I'm going to advocate for us to have our final exam online. Okay, well, um, that's it for me today. Well, for right now, uh, thank you for listening. My apologies for not being with you guys live. You are always a pleasure. Um, it just worked out that I, I wasn't able to meet with you live uh, this time. But I will see you next week. Uh, Priya, I'll see you. I need to meet with you 
Shane, I need to meet with you. And Mika, I need to meet with you. And I think I have heard from almost all of you. So if you haven't already scheduled a meeting with me and your name is Mika, Shane, or Priya, please do. All right. Um, well, that's it for me. And I will see you guys next week. Take care.